Hello everyone and welcome to a new video about my homemade Nerf Blaster version 3. This is the CAD model as you can see on the screen as I have not printed it out yet but I have designed it. So you can see from this that it looks a whole lot more like a real Nerf Blaster and less like some PVC pipe with some little 3D printed pieces on there. I have made this body piece here which covers almost all of the pipe and I've also redesigned the handle and as well as pretty much all of the other pieces. Another thing you may notice is that it has my 3D printed magazine well on here, which it means that this can take standard Nerf magazines. One issue with this is that it requires a sliding breech mechanism as opposed to a hopper which is simply passive and just works on its own. This blaster also has Picatinny rails here and here the Picatinny rail on the top is for optics because the previous version was very difficult to aim with as it just had a piece of pipe and no sights or anything. And then these here, these two, there will also be another one on the bottom here, are to mount the foregrip as you'll be able to put it either on the bottom or on either side just like how the Duminator, how the Duminator's foregrip works. Anyway, so I'll just uh, show you the insides now. So here you can see the internals. There are a few pieces which I'll go over. The first one is this little gear mechanism up here. The barrel slides forwards as opposed to normal Nerf blasters where it slides backwards and this is so that I can reduce the amount of dead space that there is behind the dart. The only problem with this is that as the priming handle moves back it needs to move the barrel forward which means there needs to be a change in the direction of motion which is what this gear is for. So this rack piece is attached to the priming handle and when it hits this gear it turns it in, and then moves this piece, this rack, in the opposite direction and this rack will be glued onto the barrel here and that will move it forwards and then backwards when you move the handle forwards again and since it's disconnected like this it means that it only moves it forward enough that the dart can go in. Right here there's a little mechanism which will have an o-ring in which will seal the uh, barrel against here when it slides back and allow the air to come through and it also acts as a little dart stopper so that the dart doesn't get pushed back into the place where the elbows will sit. On the bottom we have the standard plunger mechanism that I used in the previous two designs. We have the plunger head here which has been redesigned to have these little air release holes so that it doesn't vacuum load even though that isn't really possible with this mechanism, it's just an interesting feature. This will also use an o-ring instead of just a piece of flat rubber which should give a better seal as the previous ones didn't have the best seal. And then this plunger rod here is an, has an omnidirectional catch notch which essentially means that the plunger rod can rotate and it will still catch in any direction. That's what omni means. And then right here is the catch, which is attached with this aluminium bar to the priming handle. And you can see that when I move this, it moves back like that. It's just a simple assembly feature. And then this piece here is meant to stop the spring, which will eventually go here, from kinking in this little notch here, which is a common cause of jams with this style of mechanism. Right here we have the trigger and it's just a sliding trigger with an arm and the reason for this is because if the trigger was further forwards you'd have to make it longer so this just shortens the entire design and it just slides back like that and the catch, I don't have it here but now but it will go there so when you pull the trigger back it'll hit the catch up and fire the gun and there will be an extension spring attached to there but I don't have any of the springs in here because they're fairly difficult to add. Um, the grip has been completely redesigned from scratch, to, so it should be a lot more comfortable than the previous one. It has this little indent here for your thumb so that you can rest it there more easily, as well as some bigger finger grooves. It also has space for a 9 volt battery in the grip, which will be to power LEDs eventually, although I probably won't do that originally because it'll be quite difficult to add LEDs. I'll probably just use strips of LEDs. And as you can see, this plunger tube is actually clear and that's because I'm going to be using a polycarbonate plunger tube instead of a PVC plunger tube. 
which not only is clear but also is a lot stronger and has a defined internal diameter instead of a piece of PVC pipe which is just pipe. This is tube so it should be a bit more precise and therefore have a better seal. This entire mechanism is designed so that it will screw into the gun and I won't have to use too much adhesive hopefully. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for all the insides. So this is what the gun looks like at the moment. This is all I've designed so far. It's pretty much finished. I just have a couple more pieces to design and finish. Um, but as you can see up here, there's a little plate for a name, but I don't have a name for this gun. So if you have any ideas for a name, possibly, I, I am looking for sensible suggestions, so not silly ones. Um, but if you have an idea for a name for it, then please leave it in the comments section below if you want to. Um, that would be helpful. I also have space for sort of um, a brand logo, sort of like Nerf or Boomco, that sort of brand name thing. I've already come up with one for that, um, but if you have any ideas for that as well, you could also leave that too. But uh, that's about it for this CAD model. I do plan to enter this into the 3D printing competition on Facebook, which a few people have been talking about. Uh, as the deadline has been extended to the 21st of October, so it's possible that I may have time to enter this into the... So it is possible that I may have time to enter this into the competition, although it is about three weeks away. These pieces will take quite a long time to print, so I'm going to have to factor that in. Anyway, I'll update this soon when I have a bit more progress, such as printed parts in real life, but I hope you enjoyed this look. And thanks for watching.